If you have clicked on this video, then you have joined me in this journey of overcoming one of the most difficult tasks in human history. What we are doing today is that we are understanding Gojo's infinity using calculus. Now, I don't know about you guys. I wasn't the best at math. I wasn't in the smart classes. I think the highest level of math that I took was statistics. I mean, that shit was light work. I used that. I did that in community college. So it wasn't crazy, but I have never taken calculus in my entire life. So I haven't the slightest clue about any of this, but we're going to try to understand this. So lock in, boys. Gege Akutami kind of sucks at math. Don't take my word for it. Look, see, he can barely count. He mixed up the numbers five and 50. Why is it then that the coolest power in JJK is super mathematical? If you haven't figured it out by now, I'm talking about Limitless, Gojo's technique. If you clicked on this video, I'm sure you're familiar with it, but on the off chance you aren't, Limitless allows Gojo Satoru to distort and manipulate space. I remember we talked about this in like middle school. You know, like when you're, say you're like 10 feet away from the wall. If you divide that in half, then you're five feet away from the wall. Divide it in half again, you're like two feet and like six inches. Divide it in half again and so on and so forth. You keep dividing in half, but you would never reach the wall. You would get like this close, but you can never reach that wall. That's what I understood was Gojo's Limitless Technique. And let me say, it's one of my favorite techniques in all of fiction. It's so cool. I mean, to even like, if you want to make a broken character, give that man infinity. Like, that's crazy. How do people even, I don't, I don't even know, like you have to make the most busted character like Sukuna to beat a man like Gojo. I just think it was so cool. One of the uses of this makes it literally impossible to reach him. But what does that mean? Gege explains this with the story of Achilles and the tortoise. Imagine Achilles racing a tortoise, but the tortoise has a head start. This is one of Zeno's paradoxes, who is an ancient Greek philosopher. He argues that it's impossible for Achilles to reach the tortoise, which sounds stupid, but the reasoning is tricky. First, Achilles has to go halfway to the tortoise, then another half of that, and then another half, etc. In essence, he has to travel halfway between him and the tortoise an infinite amount of times, so he'll never reach it. But that's kind of stupid. I mean, think about it. If that reasoning checked out, then nobody, nothing could ever move, which to be fair is what Zeno argued. Motion would be impossible, since you can technically subdivide any distance into infinite parts. First of all, I can move. And second of all, that still doesn't really explain Gojo's technique. Damn, I'm already confused and I explained the same thing like 30 seconds before this. Okay, if that is the case for Achilles and a tortoise, what's stopping bro from going more than just a half? What is it? Is it like a rule that he can only go a half? Yes, I'm overanalyzing this, but just stick with me here and it'll be worth it. Now, believe it or not, what we're debating here is something that stumped mathematicians for over 2,000 years. This idea of doing an infinite number of tasks in a finite amount of time, like traveling half of a distance infinite times, has a name. A super task. Actually, Vsauce did a video on these a while back. Now, these are paradoxes, but they're like incredibly impractical. Who cares if you tell me that motion is impossible? That's not going to stop me from punching you in the face, or somewhere else. But believe it or not, this whole idea is literally the foundation of calculus. Gojo's power is literally calculus. Here, let's take a simple example. On the x-axis is how similar someone is to Megami, and on the y-axis, the chances of being a bum. A simple linear relationship. Why are these two different scales? Because Megami is a bum, eh? I'll call it bum of x. Now let's say that I'm about 53% similar to Megami. Again, I'm not proud, but just looking at the graph, I can pinpoint how likely I am to be a bum. But there's always going to be some inaccuracy in where I put this dot. Now let's say I know I'm within about 5% of 53% similar to Megami. Again, I'm not proud, but then we can draw boundary lines on the X and Y axes. So we know how bummy I am lies somewhere in this rectangle. Okay, now let's say Gojo looks at me with his six eyes and he can quantify that I'm exactly 53.245% similar to Megami or something like that. That corresponds to some bum value B. I'm leaving it arbitrary for a reason. Now we can let the horizontal lines hone in arbitrarily close to B. No matter how close they get, we can always squeeze our vertical lines to hone in on 53.245. In calculus, what we can say is that the limit as x approaches 53.245 of bum of x is b. 
and you can write that in this compact mathematical notation. Holy shit, I've never been so grateful that I have never taken calculus in my entire life. This is a fucking YouTuber explaining Gojo's technique, and I'm lost. I'm lost already. Where? What? I, um, just any, like, this, is someone watching this right now, and they're looking at this equation and being like, I could solve that shit. Like, uh, I'm just, uh, I'm, am I, um, am I mathematically challenged? We say that this is the limit because for some arbitrary margin of accuracy on the bum axis, we'll call the error epsilon. I can always choose some range, we'll call it delta on the megami axis, such that the difference between our function value bum of x and our value b is within the purple lines. Now, this whole time we've been assuming my bumminess is always directly related to my similarity to potential man. But what if we're wrong? What if that's true for most- Wait, I looked away for two seconds. Where'd these two symbols come at? Where did E come from? And where did O with a squiggly line on top? Like you're a Pikmin in that one game. Points, but not our point. Maybe that percentage corresponds to a bumminess index up here. Then it doesn't really matter how far we zoom in these lines. We'll always be wrong about my bum value. The important thing to note here is that we actually don't care what value B is what value bum of 53.245 is. It could be a point anywhere along this vertical line. All I care about is what value bum of x approaches as x gets arbitrarily close to 53.245. This is the concept of a limit. So what does this have to do with Gojo's infinity? Well, infinity is kind of just a limit. We can think about Achilles and the tortoise as an infinite sum, one half, plus one fourth, plus one eighth, plus one sixteenth, and so on. This is a bit clunky to write out, so we have a more compact, if a bit scarier, notation. We read this as the sum from- Oh, I know that shit. I know that shit. I, in one of my math classes, we use this big E. I don't know why. I don't know. Whoever decided that, like, all right, let's add letters to math. Go to your nearest bridge and just- you know what? I don't know what YouTube allows on here, so I'm going to leave that up to interpretation. 1 to n of 1 over 2 to the power i. All we're doing is plugging in values ranging from 1 up to some arbitrary number n for i, and then adding up all those terms. You can see how these two statements are equivalent. But what if we let n be infinity? Well, that's impossible in the real world, but we have a workaround now. Instead of actually plugging in infinity, just take the limit as n approaches infinity of this sum. This is the same idea as before. We just want to see what value our sum approaches as n gets larger and larger and larger and approaches infinity. We're not actually plugging in infinity, it's just a clever workaround so we don't have to deal with it. Anyways, you can try to work this out for yourself. If you do this just in a calculator and plug in like a really big number for n, you'll see that the value that it seems to approach is 1, which is what we expect. Guys, I can't do this shit. Oh my god. My brain is actually fried. Go! Oh, I'm locked. I'm locked. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, no! No! On, one more try, one more try. I aspire to be like the snake, chasing the bread, a I mean, no, well, apple in this point, um, chasing the apple every day, it's a good model to live by. Whew. Light work? Oh, I'm, I'm in flow state. Did any of you guys watch that Smiling Friends episode? Um, I saw something really uh, kind of disturbing. 
So, you know, I was just watching Smiling Friends with my girlfriend, and randomly, it was like one of the main characters, Alan, was just licking cookie crumb. Oh, it's not a good situation. Um, Alan was just licking cookie crumbs off of the boss's like chest, and it was like a still. It was there for like three seconds, and it was like so. Hold on, I gotta show you guys this before I end this video. Alan licking, I might get demonetized, licking cookies off the boss. All right, thank you guys for watching this video. Um, I guess, I guess, uh, here's this guy's video if you guys want to check it out. Um, I don't have the brain capacity for it right now, but um, yeah, subscribe if you made it all the way to the end of the video, and I love you guys. Deuces.